So looking at this example from the previous video, I want I hope these extension methods don't seem too mysterious. I know we throw the this out here and as a new programmer the concept of this could be hard and actually not to throw a wrench in your works but this here is a little different than the this that you used to but I'll talk about that in a minute. Um, but really when I write a a method call like this and the call resolves to a uh, extension method, the compiler literally just says, oh, well, you know, this is not legal in the on the missile CLR level when I compile this down to the intermediate language. This this won't fly. Okay? So instead, what the compiler will do is is just cut this and and paste it right here, treat it as a normal static method call, which is legal. We're used to that. That's something we're comfortable with. But um, syntactically, it's kind of nice to be able to write it like this. And and I can rely on the compiler swapping those for me, and it makes me feel good. But, but then as a programmer, I can read this, and it makes more sense to me. Okay, so that's that's rule number one or sugar number one. These these uh, extension methods, there's not too much sugar to them. Uh, and as I said in the previous video, they need to be in a static class. They need to be static members, and the time, the part that you're extending needs to be prefixed with this. The this indicates that it's an extension method, and you can't throw this anywhere else. I couldn't go out here and say this. All right, so let me um. In fact, just to kind of stress the point here, I'm going to cut this combine method and put it static class my extension uh, helpers. All right, and maybe you can come up with a better name than I did there, but I'm just going to throw that out there just to prove that hey, this still works. All right, combine. Well, now I got the the red squigglies here. First of all, this needs to be public. That's why I'm getting the red squigglies. The compiler can't see it. All right. Because now it's in a different class, and the default, if you don't put public, is private. Okay, so notice this one resolves, but now this, the compiler's like, I don't know what this combine is. Well, that's because it's it's now a static method in another another type. So I actually have to be a little bit more explicit now, and paste the class name there. And hopefully, not get the window to pop up in front of it. So I just pasted this class name there, and now all the squigglies are gone. Uh, the, the app still runs. The output's the same. Very good. Now let me talk about this here. All right. If you've ever done Python, and if you haven't, you probably haven't done any Python. But in Python, every instance method you actually have to pass pass the argument in the this argument in, <clears throat> or actually you just have to define uh, the this argument. Okay. So let me let me see if I can uh, take that a little further. I <clears throat> I'm gonna do. Um, Let's bring this out here, and I'm going to say class, and of course my favorite example is a cow, and I'm going to say <coughs> int num moves, uh, and then uh, <coughs> let's say public void moo, and then in here I'm going to say num moves plus plus, and then we should probably uh, <coughs> write out moo. Um, plus num moves. Okay. So now I can instantiate one of these cows. I can say cow c gets new cow, and I can say c dot moo, c dot moo, c dot moo. Let's run that, and hopefully the output is as you expect moo, one, two, three. So three moves. Alright. Well, <clears throat> every method, when I instantiate a cow here, um, I'm not. Think about what New's doing here. New has to go out to the heap and create enough room for a cow. Well, how big is a cow? Well, each cow has its own copy of num moves. If I said static out here, that would be shared amongst all all uh, instances of cow. But I didn't say static. I said I said num moves. So really, a cow is just the size of an int. I don't instantiate another portion of this code. This code in RAM, this code only exists once because all cows can share this moo method. So it makes sense when I say new cow to to make a copy of this code because the the code is identical for every instance and every instance has its own copy of num moos. When I say num moos plus plus, you know there's this imply this dot saying this object's num moos increment. Alright, but but <clears throat> But really, it just depends on the this. I mean, if I had another cow down here and said cow c2 gets new cow, and I said c2 dot c2 dot moo, that's going to modify c2's copy. Let me uh, scroll here. C2's copy of num moos. 
But C has a different copy than C2. So that this argument, even though it's implied in this case when I delete it, it's, it's very important, but, the, but it doesn't matter. This num moves changes depending on which cow you're calling moo on. All right, so here's, here's the deep concept for the day, and it's not really that deep. <clears throat> All methods are static. And instance methods are really static. They just look like instance methods. Okay, so let me see if I can prove that to you. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to actually say static. All right, and then implicitly, the compiler, on an instance method, implicitly, the compiler gives you the this. All right, but we're going to... We're going to be big boys and girls and, and take over and say, hey, I want my own this. So I'm going to say, cow this. All right? So now when I go down here, I have to be more, I have to be clearer. But I am saying this num moves. This num moves. Okay? So now when I go down here, I, I can no longer syntactically call it like this. I have to say, um... I have to say, instead of saying this, or <laughs> c2.moo, sorry for uh, the terminology confusion there, I'm going to say moo c2. All right, and let's just comment on this line. <sighs> well, you know, what's it complaining about here? Moo does not exist. Oh, I have to say cow. Sorry, yes. Cow.moo. Okay. But, but the result's the same. Let me run this. See the output? All right, I have one here because I only called moo on C2 once. I can do it. Let's do it three times like we did with C, C here. Uh, there we go, same result. So I'm just being more explicit. I'm saying, hey, instead of relying on the compiler to pass in the this instance, I'm going to pass in the instance myself. In fact, let's, uh, let's show that, that uh, I'm going to put C. I guess I should have called it C1, but... Let's we'll call it C. I'm going to copy this, paste it three times, and for C2, we'll still just call it once. Let's bring it down to one. All right. But let's run that and see. Notice <coughs> C2 has its own moo count here, and and C has its own moo count. So that's ho hopefully that's making sense. That all methods are really static. The compiler just throws the this in for us. When we when we say before I said C2 dot moo, the compiler adds the implicit this for us. But we can do it explicitly. I can turn around and say, well, let's just make it static and pass it in. Well, this is not very... Syntactically, this isn't very comfy, because I have to say cow.moo c2 instead of saying c2.moo. It was nice to be able to just say, hey, c2, will you please moo? All right, so so that's the, that's the beauty of the extension methods. In fact, that's why I say this out there. That's why the designers of the C-sharp language decided to use this because really it is the this argument that you're doing it on. And now that I've thrown this this out here, I can say C2 dot uh, moo if I but make this class static. Okay, but now that it's static, this it, thing's not going to work anymore. But, but the idea is the, the same. In fact, let's just call, here, I'll just make a static class cow methods Let's just move this up here. I'm going to move that extension methods in here. And then my cow is now instantiatable still because it's not static. All right. But now, <coughs> now I have red squigglies on the ones I'm calling statically. But, but notice the, the one I'm calling somewhat like an instance method that looks like an instance method is fine. All right. So let me, uh, let me see if I can get all this on the screen so we can just evaluate it before I shut this way too long video down. But essentially, every method is static. Num moves. Let's see, what's the num moves? Oh, well, this this thing needs to see it. So if I made it public, and, or however I want to set this up. But but basically, public int num moves, num moves, num moves, so on and so forth. It looks like an instance method. It feels like an instance method, but it's really a static extension method. And uh, instance methods do the same. In fact, in one of my classes, I have the students swap the this pointer on two objects. And call instance methods, and it's kind of interesting to see how that goes, but you have to get down to the nitty-gritty bytes and bits <clears throat> past beyond what C-sharp will let you do. But but that's the gist of an extension method, is basically we say this because it really is kind of the this R object and that, that you're sending in here. But Anyway, yada yada yada.